degrees Celsius in Hamburg, minus 15 in London. Yes, so we're in London today. <laughs> So we just arrived into London, um, first time in ages. I'm actually very scared of the accent. I hope I understand like half of it. Um, and we are here for the launch of the Nespresso Momento. And uh, I'm quite excited what's going to happen because we're going to discuss uh, the office setting. Like, do we need offices? What kind of offices do we need for generations? <laughs> Okay, das Problem ist, der Reißverschluss geht nicht auf und nicht zu. Ist fest, der Unterteil ist offen. Ja. Hält jetzt einigermaßen. Ja. Und okay, let's go. Welcome to London. Uh, we're here for the launch of Nespresso Professional Momento. And we're gonna discuss together with Hammer Miller and Nespresso and um, some, some panelists the meaning of the office. So the funny thing is that we wrote an article a couple of weeks ago about how it is to bring your whole self to the office because most of the people say they can only be half of themselves at the office. So, I mean, clearly um, you don't want to know, you don't want to present all of yourself to the office, to your colleagues, because some parts maybe don't, like someone doesn't even want to know. Some parts of me you don't want to know, so um, yeah. Um, and the research that Nespresso brought out the other day shows that 70% of employees admit that they don't really know their colleagues. And then 80% of the people, the same people, say that knowing your colleagues brings happiness and um, joy to, to, the, to work. So I'm wondering, hello people, uh, meet. on the way to Hammer Miller and let's see who's there already. Yeah. Hi. Nice, nice to meet you. Hi. Hi. How are you. I'm good, how are you? Nice to meet you, Julia. Hi, Hi. Hi. Nice to meet you. I'm I'm the moderator. Hi. Hi. Pleased to meet you. I've been checking Hi. in Hi. I'm from Espresso. Hi. So happy you can make it. So digital natives are, are entering the job market. Um, do we need to design workplaces to suit them? And if so, what do we need to do? Designing for generation can be a bit of a challenge because in the end there is a working culture, right? There's so many different people in the office and I always think it's more, more about the what does the community want? Find out how do you want to collaborate in the future? How do you want to communicate in the future? And then create one vision um, which is not um, designed by one generation but by all of them. And I think all of them can learn from each other. People's uh, motivation it affects their performance, their well-being and I think it does ultimately affect their wanting to stay if you get that environment right. But I've seen organisations, some of the big uh, consultancy firms, where they've pushed the homework and the flexible working so much, their younger people who are coming in don't hang around so long because it's like, well, we don't see anyone, there's no mentoring, there's no socialising, and I think that's how the, what the workplace can do. How do you feel when you hear the word millennials? And what is your view on gen the generations at work? The labelling is less useful. I think what we need to look at is what people need. What do people need in their day-to-day -day jobs? So I think if we start looking at those things more clearly, and not so much the kind of label that we can put on people, I think that will bring us a bit further in the discussion. Call them whatever you want, but people who are new to the workforce and new to work um, have generally simpler jobs, so they're not you know, running around to 50 different meetings and meeting with senior stakeholders and doing these things. They generally have um, a less complex role. But what's really valuable to them, what's really important to them, is learning from others because they don't have the background that people who've been in that industry or that particular company um, for more time. And that, uh, that, that great community build, does that involve a great coffee machine by any chance? <laughs> well, it does! 
does. <laughs> um, so the research actually that we did last year looks at kind of what drives employee sentiment. And most people will show up to, off to the office and if their coffee is, the coffee machine's not working or the coffee's not good, your day's not getting off to a great start. Um, and one of the things we look at in service features within the survey is tea, coffee, and other refreshments. Um, it, in most surveys that we look at, that's the number one service feature. So people are not saying, you know, Wi-Fi, these kind of things that you think of that are standard that you would expect, parking, some of those things. Um, people are actually, the most important thing to them is tea and coffee. How important is the office experience? The experience, yeah. the whole experience of the office, not just the furniture or the management, but yeah. the tech, the everything else. Super important, of course. Um, and I would love, I was talking to um, someone before who's showing us around from Herman Miller. Mm -hmm. And we were talking about the Harry's office in New York, which was um, also, I think you were part of that as well, or your company was part of that as well. And um, I love the idea that everything melts together. They have an amazing furniture, they have an amazing coffee, which happens to be an amazing kitchen where people meet, where people have breakfast. They have an amazing community, and in the end, everything is, um, to me, it goes down to a good community, good energy. And one of my, my kind of best, you know, canary in the coal mine questions is where do people take private phone calls? Yes. Where do you go for, you know, your GP practice calls yeah. or it's a call from school and you're kind of like oh my god you know I don't want everyone else to hear what my kid has been <laughs> up to again so a, in a lot of times people go to the most bizarre places like staircases you know now everyone can benefit from your conversations you know fantastic